Hey, it's Kelly. Welcome back to my channel where we talk all about gentle skincare and sometimes self-care. And today I am not talking about niacinamide. A couple of weeks ago, I did a routine featuring all products that did not contain hyaluronic acid. It was a request from quite a few subscribers and you guys really liked that video. And in that video, a lot of the comments said, no, do no niacinamide. So your wish is my command. Now, niacinamide is a fantastic ingredient that I really, really love, but it does happen to be in a ton of skin skincare products. And that can pose problems for those individuals who are sensitive to the ingredient or those individuals who find layering multiple products with that ingredient make their skin feel very, very irritated. So I want to offer you some ideas and inspiration on how to build an effective skincare routine that can give you benefits like niacinamide, brightening, well-aging, skin repair, and strengthening of the barrier without using niacinamide as an ingredient. So if you're so ready, give the video a big thumbs up and let's jump right in. All right, so I pulled my bangs back and I'm ready to go in for a double cleanse tonight to remove this makeup and sunscreen. So I'm gonna be using the Nacific Origin Cleansing Oil. This is the Bakuchiel edition, and this doesn't have any fragrance or essential oils. It doesn't have any niacinamide, but it's a really good effective oil cleanser for breaking down makeup and sunscreen. Now, if you're not into oil cleansers, but you do like balm cleansers for removing sunscreen and makeup, I really love the beauty of Josan. You know this, the radiance cleansing balm. This is one of my favorite first cleansers. So, so good and absolutely no niacinamide. After I remove my makeup, I am following up with the Beauty of Josan Green Plum Refreshing Cleanser. This stuff is so great. It's really gentle. It's effective. It's affordable and it doesn't have any niacinamide or any hyaluronic acid in it either. And what I really like about the Nacific Cleansing Oil is it is so light. It is really fluidy and there's something about that texture with oils when they're not like thicker, they spread so easily, so quickly on the skin, and they're just really amazing for helping to get out any impurities in your pores. It can be helpful too for getting like congestion out of your skin too, a uh, little grits. I can feel, I can feel some coming out of my cheek right now. It's really just hardened sebum that gets stuck in your pores and you know, definitely can cause clogs or acne down the road. So I just love that like sensation of like getting all of that out of my congestion prone skin. Okay. so makeup successfully removed with the oil cleanser, but I definitely have like the residue on my face. I'm going to follow up with a foaming cleanser. This is the beauty of Josan green plum cleanser. And I forgot to show you these like scrunchy cuffs. You can get these like on yes style and these help to keep the water from dripping down your arm because I literally hate that sensation so, so much. So these are actually like really cool. Um, kind of like a neat way. If you have like um, scrunchies that are absorbent. You can just use those too, but I really like this because I can't stand the water dripping down my arm and then getting onto my sweater and blah. This is the Secret Key Starting Treatment Essence. This has a high percentage of Galactomyces ferment in it. It does not contain niacinamide, but it is absolutely focused on helping to brighten up the complexion. And it's got this really thin texture because it's a first essence. It goes on right after cleansing. It's thinner than like almost any toner out there. It just quickly like absorbs right into the skin and it's going to help with the complexion. It's going to give your skin a lot of rich vitamins and minerals and amino acids. It actually helps to support your skin barrier as well, your skin health. It also, because of the fermented and that thinner texture, it helps your other skincare kind of penetrate into your skin deeply. It's not a very hydrating product, so I'm like, I'm already reaching for my toner because my skin feels dry from from it, but it's really thinking of it as like a prep product and a really nice way to boost the brightening in your skincare routine. So for toner, I am going for my longtime favorite Make Preem Essence Toner. This is a, such a great, really replenishing, deeply hydrating toner. I absolutely love it. My skin is already like, ah, thank you. I needed that, that burst of hydration and that's exactly what this toner gives me. It's a really minimal formula, really just focus on, like I said, replenishing the skin. I just opened this bottle. I was using some other things, which, you know, I, I definitely like to, uh, you know, flirt with other skincare, but I always seem to come back to this one because it just, it does the trick and it really is just so, um, 
cost effective too because you get such a nice big size so i rely on it so so much i just put on a second layer um lately i've only been doing like two layers of toner instead of like my normal three layers it's all about tuning into your skin right lately my skin has been holding on to hydration like surprisingly super well so i've cut back on the layers that i'm doing and uh, just two layers of that toner my skin feels very hydrated so let's talk serums i actually have a variety here to show you i'm not going to use all of these tonight but i want to give you some options because if you can't use niacinamide you may be feeling like you're missing out on those benefits and niacinamide offers a lot but it's not the only ingredient that can brighten your skin or repair it or stimulate collagen so if you are missing niacinamide for its brightening benefits an ingredient you want to know about that has powerful of brightening capabilities but it actually works slightly differently on the skin is arbitin this is a really great ingredient for for uh, sun damage, stubborn patches um, on the skin. It's really great for an uneven complexion. It's also great for post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. It basically does it all. Uh, Beauty of Just On has a really great Arbitin serum that is the Glow Deep Serum that combines rice extract with alpha Arbitin in it. The texture of this is really nice. I wanna show it to you because it's actually really suitable for most skin types. It is just like a very loose, hydrating, uh, very light gel type of of texture really great absorbency into the skin and it's not too thick it's not greasy if you're familiar with the beauty of Joseon glow serum that doesn't have arbitin it does have niacinamide and it's a much thicker texture that not everybody loves right but this one is a little bit more universal so let's talk about niacinamide's ability to stimulate collagen at percentages of four and five percent it's a great well aging ingredient if you can't use niacinamide you may consider using vitamin C in your skincare routine instead this also has collagen stimulating abilities. It can also brighten up stubborn dark patches, sun damage, uneven skin tone. It's a fantastic brightener. It's also an antioxidant like niacinamide. It's probably the closest contender to niacinamide for sure. One that I like, I'm sorry, my bottle is really um, quite... Uh, beaten up, but one that I really like is from Stradia. It's their C plus C serum. This stuff's really great because it contains pure vitamin C, L ascorbic acid, with the stabilized form of uh, vitamin C, which actually makes this serum so resistant to oxidization. It's really fantastic. The combination of vitamin C in here makes up about 15%, and it's a very, very potent formula, but it's also very gentle. My skin doesn't accept l ascorbic acid very well but i do pretty good with this one and i just like that i can empty the bottle without worrying about oxidization it's just a smart formulation so it's a good alternative to niacinamide now you may know niacinamide to be a great skin healer it helps to support your skin barrier it helps to repair the skin it's great for healing overall and just strengthening the skin so my pick for an alternative here it's a little bit different but hear me out on this one this is the Neod Copper Amino Isolate Serum, also known as CASE. So this features 1% of copper peptide and 1% of tripeptide. There's a couple other peptides in here, and this is really focused on so much really, but this really helps to repair the skin. Not only does this have really great well aging benefits with long-term use, you should see some improvement in fine lines and wrinkles. Long-term use, you will also see an improvement in the complexion of your skin. It just really makes your skin so radiant because it's full of so much like healthy goodness for your skin. It's really repairing and strengthening your skin. I've used this quite a bit in the past. I've recently kind of come back to this and I've noticed that I did have quite a bad breakout in the last couple of weeks that I'm currently healing from. You can see it on my face. You can see the hyperpigmentation. But as soon as I started using this serum, my skin started healing a lot faster. The pimples that had been popped or that had made my skin really raw and peeling all of those areas were just mending up so much faster when I started to add this consistently into my routine. Copper peptide is really the star ingredient here. That's why I thought about this ingredient as a potential alternative to niacinamide's ability to strengthen and heal the skin. It's been really helpful for me in repairing my skin as I'm recovering from these breakouts and it does not contain any niacinamide, but it still has really powerful benefits. So for my serum today, I am going to be using the Neod serum. It really is what my skin is 
meaning today in the moment. This is so watery. I'm just, I'm not touching this in my face, I promise you, but I'm getting it really cl close and then just dropping it in. I'm doing this for a couple of reasons. It is so stinking watery that if I was to put it like onto my hands first, as you saw when I swatched it, a lot of it could get wasted. This is an extremely expensive serum. It's in the $90 range. It, I think it's worth it if you can afford it. I can't always afford it, so I'm certainly not going to be wasting it tonight. So it's a really quick to absorb. It is so watery. It doesn't offer much to the skin in terms of hydration or moisture, so I think it'll work for all skin types. This is something that you don't really want to mix with AHAs or BHAs. I'm not using any tonight. This is not something I would use on a tretinoin night either. It's not good to um, combine it with retinoids. And um, vitamin C, it's not a great pair because they oxidize when they, when they meet each other, so that's not great either. But I'm not gonna be using those ingredients tonight, so this was my serum of choice. So let's talk eye cream. This is definitely another area where niacinamide tends to creep in quite a bit, and a lot of my favorite eye creams have niacinamide in them. However, one that has really similar benefits to niacinamide, it's brightening, it stimulates collagen, works on fine lines and wrinkles, is the Polish Choice C5 Super Boost Eye Cream. This features 5% of a stabilized form of vitamin C. So this has like a gel cream type of consistency. It is very light. It's not overwhelming or really buttery or rich. It's just like the right amount of moisture. Um, I really, really like it. Mine's basically empty at this point and I've definitely Definitely notice that it really helps with darkness or discoloration in the under eye area. I think it also helps with collagen stimulation because it just kind of helps keep things really nice and firm. But because if you remember, I said the Neod Serum is not really a good pair with vitamin C. Um, I am only going to be putting it in my eye area, but I don't, you know, I don't want to go against uh, those two ingredients don't go together. So I'm actually going to go for a different eye cream. This is the Biosant Squalene and Marine Algae Eye Cream. And this is an not by any means my most favorite eye cream in the world, um, but it does actually have a really similar texture to Polish Choice. You can see it's like a, a nice thin uh, cream type of texture. It's not gonna be too greasy or overwhelming. But I'm going with this one because this is what matches up with the serum that I picked. The Neon Serum, I did run it all the way up to my eyes and on top, it's going to give me some really nice rejuvenating skin repairing benefits. So I'm not worried about just going in for this. Really the Biosense eye cream is really just about moisturizing that area and protecting it. So I'm not too concerned about missing out on any brightening or collagen stimulation. I'm getting all of that from the serum that I chose. Um, so you could definitely, you don't even need eye cream if you don't want it. I just personally like it. My under eyes do a benefit from a little additional moisture. And that's exactly what this product does. It is a really nice additional moisturizing product for the eye area. So let's talk barrier care because if you've seen, I always say this, right? If you've seen any skincare routine from me, you know that I personally build it a step into my skincare routine, specifically focused on serum cholesterol and fatty acids to keep my skin barrier strong. That is just something that works really well for me. I have sensitive skin, I am prone to eczema, and I'm also prone to dehydration. That's just the way that my body is and my body and my skin responds really well when I build those ingredients into my routine consistently. My skin stays really strong and healthy. That's just what I know about me. Now I would normally use Stradia Liquid Gold here, but that does contain 4% of niacinamide. So a really nice worthy alternative that is getting you all those great barrier building ingredients is the Polish Choice Omega Plus Complex Serum. So this has a creamy emollient texture, but it's not super thick. It does still stay true to that serum-like uh, texture. I am just gonna add a couple drops of oil. I just really like to boost up moisture in my skincare routine, especially at night. You don't need to do this step in order to have a healthy, strong barrier. Again, it's just what I know about my skin and what has worked for me throughout the years. This is the Ordinary Chia Seed Oil. This is a nice oil to go for if you are focused on barrier re uh, repair or strengthening though because it's got some great omega fatty acids in it and it's not too heavy. I actually just went for about two drops because the Polish Choice Serum, I'm just mixing them together and then I'm gonna apply. The Polish Choice Serum um, has a nice amount of oils in it already um, that's offering a good amount of moisture. So I'm just adding a little bit. I'm adjusting based on my skin needs, right? And then I'm just gonna kind of like warm my hands and just kind of press it in to just make sure everything is 
uh, even and is absorbing nicely into my skin. So while I let that oil and that serum absorb into my skin for just a moment, let's talk options. Because just like the hyaluronic acid free routine that I did a couple of weeks ago, I acknowledge that my skin type is probably not like yours. And you may be thinking about different products or you may just have a different skin type. So let's talk sheet masks because this is an area I don't find niacinamide to be fairly common in sheet masks, but if you do like to indulge in them and you want a niacinamide free option. I really like the secret key starting treatment essential mask sheet. This does not contain niacinamide, but it is actually very brightening for the skin. This has galactomyces ferment in it, which is so good for really like brightening up the complexion. It can help with hyperpigmentation overall. It's just like a skin healthy type of ingredient that will make your face glow. This is one of my longtime favorite sheet masks. I do keep these on hand. I use them fairly often because when I use a sheet mask, when I take it off, I want to see results. This definitely delivers for a brighter, healthier complexion. Moisturizers. This is definitely an area where you're going to need individual recommendations based on skin type, right? I am combination um, skin, but I do lean on the dry side. And this is coming out probably a few weeks after I'm filming this, but like it is snowing outside. <laughs> It's March and it's snowing, so you can tell the, the climate is still being very harsh on my skin and making it feel more dry than usual. So tonight I'm gonna use the Estra Ado Barrier 365 Cream. I'm gonna put this on in just a second. I'll tell you a little bit more about this, but no niacinamide. But let me give you some options for different skin types. If you have an oily skin type, a no niacinamide moisturizer is the Purito Breeze Water Gel Cream. This is so, so thin. It's got a nice amount of hydration to it. There's like no occlusivity here. It is very, very thin. If you have combination skin, you might like the I Unique Black Snail Restore Cream. This does not have niacinamide in it, but it does contain black snail secretion filtrate, which is actually another healing, repairing type of ingredient. Niacinamide is usually added into moisturizers for its barrier building um, abilities. So this can be a nice alternative. And if you have dry skin, you're looking for a more occlusive type of texture. This is the Cure Code St. John Formula Intensive Care Ointment. So you can see this is quite a stiff, thick texture. It's a very buttery. It's definitely got that ointment-like uh, type of texture. It really envelops your skin and it does have a richness to it. I think it's really, really occlusive, very protective. And like I said, really great for dry skin. Right now, my skin is in between and that's where the Estera cream comes in. So you can see this is a medium weight cream, but it's got a little bit more fluidity maybe um, to it, a little bit more softness to it than the uh, Cure Code cream that I just showed you, that ointment balm. It doesn't have as rich or a stiff or thick of a texture. This just like melts into the skin. It feels really amazing, but it's still very breathable. It's not sealing my skin off. It's just the right amount that I need right now. So this is a nighttime routine. I'm not going to be putting on sunscreen to go to sleep. I know some people have done that. I've read some Reddit posts <laughs> about people who do that. Don't do that. That's not necessary. But if you are looking for a niacinamide free sunscreen, I have a recommendation for you. This is the Goodall H Cordata Calming Sun Cream. This is SPF 50 PA plus four using uh, all new generation chemical filters and I really like this. I recently got this in the a tail end of summer, beginning of fall, and I just love this essency texture. It is really light, it's airy, it has like a refreshing kind of feel on the skin, but it's got really nice coverage, really good protection on the skin. It feels so good, absolutely no niacinamide, and I know that that's kind of hard to find in sunscreens because niacinamide does help boost the sunscreen protection. It's not necessary for good formulation, but it helps. And so you do find it very commonly in a lot of sunscreens. So this was actually the area that was probably the trickiest for me to find a niacinamide-free sunscreen. Um, but it just so happens one sunscreen that I absolutely love doesn't contain it. And sleeping masks. Like I said, I wanted to give you a variety. I wanna give you options. I wanna cover all my bases with product recommendations in this video. So a sleeping mask 
mask that I really, really like that does not contain niacinamide, but will help to like brighten up and rejuvenate your complexion is the Cosrx Propolis Honey Overnight Mask. So I'm only gonna put a little bit on because honestly my skin feels really good and I don't wanna overwhelm it. You know, skin changes from moment to moment, day to day. Yesterday I put like two layers of moisturizer on because that's what my skin was craving. And today my skin feels really settled. But I do like to put a little bit of sleeping mask like right under my eye area and around my nose. I just need a little extra moisture tonight. I could take a little bit of the, the brightening too and the anti-inflammation benefit of propolis. Um, because I am still healing a little bit from those breakouts and a lot of them occurred around my nose area. This actually is not a thick sleeping mask, by the way. You see the texture um, is more of a gel-like texture, but there is occlusivity here. Um, it definitely will give you that slugging effect, but this is one of my favorites because it does, it helps to calm down. If you do have breakouts, it will help to reduce redness, inflammation, propolis is such a healing ingredient for the skin, um, but it also is an ingredient that can reliably give you that really healthy healthy lit from within glow when you wake up in the morning. Everybody talks about niacinamide's brightening benefits. Propolis can definitely give you a glow too. I wanted to feature this one particularly too because this line from Cosrx, the Propolis line, the toner, the serum, the cream, this mask, no niacinamide in that whatsoever. So that's a great line to explore if you are going niacinamide free. Uh, so many amazing options in that line. I love all those products. So there you go. I just did a brightening routine that helps to support my skin barrier health and my well aging goals all achieved without any niacinamide whatsoever. I really hope that this was helpful to those of you who really needed this video. Uh, so many of you have asked for this for quite a while. Um, so I really hope that this helped you to give you some inspiration and some ideas, some ingredients to think about when you are going niacinamide free in your skincare routine, or you're just looking for some new product suggestions. I hope you are healthy, happy, and safe wherever you are in the world. Thanks for being here with me tonight, and I can't wait to see in the next video. I'll talk to you soon.